1961, the SCP Foundation discovered a town that was completely devoid of all life. Not long before their arrival, Darrington, North Carolina had been a community with high aspirations, a deeply religious township of devout Christians, many of whom were seeking greater prosperity from their lives. But now their home was a ghost town, with no sign of any prior Darrington resident to be found. Where in the hell had they all gone? It hardly seemed like the population of an entire town would all simultaneously decide to up sticks and leave two pastures new. But then again, maybe the citizens of Darrington hadn't left at all. Perhaps they weren't even really still human, and had taken up residence somewhere much darker, like underground. This is the story of one of the earliest known instances of a phenomenon now known under the designation of SCP-3089, or to use its alternative name, that old-time religion. When the SCP Foundation arrived in a desolate Darrington to find the townsfolk had all vanished, they immediately began an investigation into the exact hows and whys, the answers to what exactly had happened here. After all, while not a huge place, Darrington was home to nearly a thousand residents, and that many people don't just disappear, if they even had disappeared and weren't just dormant. But what the Foundation uncovered was a gruesome discovery that led them to not only demolishing the entire North Carolinian town, but purchasing all the land around it to keep the area under permanent observation. Prior to the demolition, however, the Ministry of Sevenfold Blessing had been one of the oldest buildings in Darrington, much like most town churches. And it was while searching the offices of this church that the Foundation cleanup crews discovered their first piece of evidence the initial clue about what had happened to this deserted town. They recovered a series of cassette tapes, each with a recording of sermons that had been given within the Ministry of Seventhfold Blessing. These were all delivered by one pastor, Bartholomew Jenner, the first having been recorded on August 17th of 1959, two years earlier. My friends, I want to talk to you about what the Bible offers tonight, Pastor Jenner began in the first of these recordings. I want to talk to you about what you are owed. I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to those of you who are struggling right now. To those of you who have hardship and pain. Maybe you've heard that the Bible only nourishes the spirit. That God only provides for our immortal souls. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that this is simply not true. Pastor Bartholomew Jenner seemed to be focused on the discussion of very real, relatable problems. After all, what person hasn't felt unsatisfied with their life at one point or another? And this was apparently no different for the people of Darrington. Many of you can think of places in your lives where you have not yet risen, where you are not yet victorious. Marriage, finances, hell. But do not fret, my friends, God wants you to rise. He has cleared a path for you. It is one littered with his earthly treasures. To claim them, you only need to shed your old selves and be reborn. The pastor was merely using the shared faith of the township to help reaffirm that their struggles were not the be-all end-all of their lives. Or at least, that's how it first appeared. But the religious practices taking place in this first recording would soon take a bizarre turn, making it clear there was something far more sinister, even cult-like, going on in the Ministry of Seventhfold Blessing. Now, if you would, some of the ladies from the mayor's office were kind enough to collect these cicada shells. Pass along, each of you take one. Yes, the children too. Be careful, very careful. They are fragile. Each of you take one and hold it in your left hand. Yes, the left hand, not the right. Your left. The shells of dead cicadas hardly seem like common fare for a sermon like this. Although as the recording continued, it was easy to understand that Pastor Jenner intended these discarded insect carapaces to be something of a metaphor, even if they were pretty gross, especially to some of the younger members of his congregation. He explained to the Darrington residents that these cicada shells were meant to be symbolic of whatever hardship the citizens were currently struggling with in their lives, whether it was work, a marriage, or an ill family member. Then came the next part of this unorthodox practice. The pastor instructed everyone in the congregation to picture themselves holding their biggest problem in their left hand. Now I want you to squeeze your left hand. Squeeze it into a fist. Feel that problem cracking like old dried out paper. Feel it crumble to dust, Jenner told them. And the residents of Darrington did so, crushing the cicada shells until there was nothing left. 
Everyone open your eyes. Don't you feel better? Stronger. This is what is offered. Our hardships are like the shell. We shall cast them aside even as they crumble. God has cleared a path. Needless to say, the Foundation agents that recovered the tapes of Pastor Jenner's odd sermons weren't exactly sure what to make of them. And as unusual as they were, the recordings did little to indicate where the townspeople of Darrington, North Carolina had disappeared to. But as they listened further, what they found was even more unsettling than an entire congregation of people crushing cicada shells. In the second recording, dated December 19th of 1959, Pastor Jenner was once again presiding over his congregation. He had just finished quoting a passage from Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, which related to a biblical tale known as the Parable of the Talents. In this story, a master puts his servants in charge of a differently sized portion of his wealth while he is away, then judges them based on whether or not his servants make a profit using his money. The third servant, who had received the least talents, meaning an amount of money, was punished for burying his share in the ground cast out into the outer darkness, to face weeping and gnashing of teeth. It was after making mention of this unprofitable servant that Pastor Jenner went on to address even more of the bizarre, almost ritualistic practices he had been introducing to his sermons. Now, some of you have expressed concerns over the new sacraments. A few have even called them sacrilege. And yet, have we not prospered? Have these same naysayers, these same doubting Thomases, not profited from our good works? The pastor declared. I have shown you how to heal the sick with the Lord's prayer and the blood of an unbaptized child. I have shown you how to see your future in the stemming entrails of a quivering crow. I have shown you the path to glory, but I cannot make you follow this path. I can only show it to you. It is you and you alone who must follow it, who must rise and shed your old self. Shed your old self. The words immediately called to mind the image of the cicadas, insects that discard their outer carapaces and emerge anew, bugs that also burrow into the ground and wait, lying dormant under the earth for years at a time, all before they emerge, rising up again, so they can spread. It was becoming clear that Pastor Jenner was certainly deviating further and further from the church's normal religious practices. His bold and blatant descriptions of what sounded like ritualistic sacrifices were shocking enough to hear, speaking of using blood and entrails to bring the town the prosperity it sought. But if that wasn't bad enough, the worst was still yet to come, contained within the third and final recording. Unlike the previous cassettes, most of the sermon from June 7, 1960 was almost completely unintelligible, and without any visual evidence to go along with it. It was hard for the Foundation to make out exactly what was going on. It began with another quote from Matthew, this time chapter 28, verse 6, which made mention of the resurrection of Jesus, that he had risen, and that people should come and see where the Lord lay. Not a metaphor, my friends, Pastor Jenner explained before urging his congregation to join in some kind of formation. Step forward, mothers behind their daughters, fathers behind their sons. Turn to face the, uh... The recording became unintelligible again after that point, with only a few more words being audible. The pastor seemed to have gathered the townsfolk of Darrington, presumably for some new form of ritual. He encouraged the town's children to close their eyes and pray, before reminding the congregation that God sacrificed the life of his only son, Jesus. Frighteningly, it appeared that Pastor Jenner was implying the adults of Darrington should do the same. One of the next fragments of his sermon that could be deciphered declared, Lamb is slaughtered to feed the lion, the son is slaughtered to feed. Between more and more noise interfering with the recording, Pastor Jenner could be heard saying, The pact is complete. This world shall be our paradise. Before he encouraged his congregation, or those who were left, to dig deep and wait. Then came perhaps the most horrifying part of the tape. The remainder of the recording lasted 30 minutes, comprised of pure static. Or the Foundation agents listening to it assumed at first that it was just interference, but further audio analysis seemed to suggest that the long, continuous mass of hissing wasn't static at all. It was the chittering sound of insects, like the noise made by cicadas. For a time, the incident at Darrington left the Foundation baffled. There seemed to be no clear answer as to what had happened. Not one of the town's residents were anywhere to be found. And on top of that, there were no bodies. No remains of any kind to speak of. If they were dead, there would at least be some kind of trace. 
And then there were all the questions raised by Pastor Bartholomew Jenner's strange sermons. Why did he seem so focused on enacting rituals? Did any of his methods really benefit the town? And why did he place so much emphasis on cicadas, of all things? Answers were few and far between. Although almost six decades after the Foundation discovered the desolate town of Darrington, a new development would come to light. To be more accurate, it was 56 years later. On the 11th of January, 2017, a Foundation agent named Daniel Mitchell was patrolling the area that had formerly been Darrington, North Carolina before the Foundation had demolished all traces of the town. By this point, the SCP Foundation had long thought that they had figured out exactly what SCP-3089 was. They had even encountered it emerging in a number of different forms in both 2007 and 2015. However, it was what Daniel Mitchell happened across during the routine monthly patrol that revealed the horrifying truth. At the outskirts of the area where the town had once been, a series of sinkholes had opened up at some point between the previous monthly check and this one in early 2017. And if you think that these sinkholes caused a disturbance in the earth and uncovered all the bodies of the former residents of Darrington, you'd be wrong. It was far, far stranger. The Foundation conducted a full-scale examination of the sinkholes around the demolished North Carolinian town. And these weren't just a few patches of loose ground that had sunk through. The geological survey the Foundation carried out quickly revealed that these sinkholes led to an extensive network of tunnels underground. They extended several hundred kilometers outwards, practically covering the entire underside of where Darrington had been. The tunnels seemed far too big than any other created by any natural means, but the entire network also appeared too rudimentary, too imperfect to have been carved using any modern excavation technology, like a large drill. Plus, if any equipment like that had been on site, the Foundation would have noticed, as they kept the area monitored. It was almost like something had been burrowing through the ground, only to eventually crawl back up to the surface, resulting in the sinkholes. What's more, the Foundation's geological tests suggested that the network of tunnels was almost four decades old. That would have placed the date of their creation about 10 years after the disappearance of everyone in Darrington. Naturally, the Foundation immediately launched a mission to explore more of the tunnels. Before even completing a full sweep of the underground space in its entirety, they had made another discovery. Contained within the tunnels was over a whole ton of organic material that had been mostly preserved without decomposing too much. The SCP Foundation began gathering samples for testing, finding most of this material to be severely desiccated dermis tissue. That is the dense layer of skin beneath the epidermis, and it had all been entirely dried out. But that wasn't all the testing uncovered. According to genetic analysis, the tissue had two distinct types of DNA present. The first being easily identified as human genetic material, which made sense. Despite the material lacking in moisture, the dermis tissue didn't match the skin of any other mammal. But then, there was the other DNA present. Combined with the expected human DNA was the presence of something else that the Foundation researchers had quite some difficulty finding a match for. Eventually, they determined that this genetic material entangled with the human DNA belonged to the Cicadata Montana, better known as the New Forest Cicada. Cicadas, again. Cicada DNA mixed with human DNA, discovered in a large network of underground tunnels, all beneath the same town where a pastor had his congregation crush cicada shells in their left hands during one of his sermons. Ten years before the sinkhole incident, the Foundation was alerted to a particular YouTube channel by the name of Kai Sanchez Positively Rich. On the surface, Kai was one of the many online grifters preaching about how easy it was to quickly achieve an obscene amount of wealth by simply believing in yourself. Usually, if not always, these types of people were trying to scam their audience of loyal subscribers into investing in some kind of illicit money-making scheme or any number of other cons, promising their followers easy money that never came. But Kai Sanchez's channel was slightly different, so much so that the Foundation had to contain his entire audience, deeming them to have been affected by SCP-3089. The video that caught the Foundation's attention was an hour-long upload from Kai, entitled, Seven Secrets to Ascend the Ladder of Prosperity. There was that word again, prosperity. 
the same thing Pastor Jenner had promised his entire congregation in Darrington. And the similarities didn't end there. In his video, much like the pastor during his sermons, Kai Sanchez encouraged his audience to visualize their success in order to achieve it. He implied that the human consciousness could impact reality. For example, if his viewers just imagined themselves having a bigger bank account or looking more attractive, then these things would manifest themselves into the real world. One of Kai's secrets to ascend the ladder of prosperity was as follows. Visualize your ascendance. Reimagine yourself as someone who can reach the top of that ladder. Shed your old identity, tear it off, throw it aside like dead skin. You won't need it, not where you're going. The resemblance to Pastor Jenner's sermons was uncanny. Kai's video even encouraged that his audience leave scraps out to lure stray cats into their homes, and then, once they had one, to take a knife and, well, you remember what happened in Darrington. But Kai Sanchez made sure to specify, remember to hold the knife with your left hand. Another online community was tagged by the foundation for similar teachings. This group of insular men were trying to apply the same methodology primarily to attract women. However, they also reasoned it could be used to improve their own financial status and physical stature, all done through visualizing and believing that doing so would make these things improve, that having faith would grant them prosperity. This disturbed community even tried to use bug rattlers to emit frequencies to aid in attracting women. Contained within these rattlers were the preserved remains of cicadas. Male cicadas have timbals, structures on their outer shell that emit a loud hissing, chittering noise that they often use to find a mate, after spending so much time dormant underground, before burrowing up to the surface. And if you've been paying attention, you might be able to guess exactly where this is going. SCP-3089 is a phenomenon that occurs within communities of people who are seeking some form of prosperity. Whether that community be a town, a group of like-minded people online, or any other group of collected individuals, the particular type of prosperity these people are all seeking can be anything from spiritual enlightenment to financial success. The SCP Foundation does not yet quite understand exactly how SCP-3089 starts, only that the communities affected by it will attempt to achieve their chosen material success through the application of rituals, like visualizing what they hope to overcome and achieve, and practicing sacrifices. In short, these people have to believe these acts will grant them what they want. They need to be willing to go far enough to do unspeakable things. They need to have faith. Although what they don't realize is, some things can feed on that faith they can harvest it. Before these communities realize the terrible things that they have done, or who exactly has tricked them into performing these rituals, they'll begin to undergo a horrific transformation process, known as SCP-3089-B. It begins in the chrysalis stage. Members of a community that have been affected by SCP-3089 will experience a declined state of metabolism. Now classified as an instance of SCP-3089-A, their brain activity, heart rate, and body temperature will all begin to lower. Over a period of between three and six hours, these people will then suffer a change to their epidermis, the outer layer of skin. It starts to harden until it has formed a dense, brittle substance, like a shell. Next comes the second stage of SCP-3089-B, metamorphosis. Internally, SCP-3089-A individuals will develop a number of tetromas, a type of germ cell tumor that can contain several different types of tissue, such as hair, muscle, and bone. During the next two or three weeks, these tumors will expand and dissolve the person's soft tissue. Then there's the final stage, emergence. An instance of SCP-3089-A will exit its dormant state that began in the initial stage. Once they have awoken, then something exits the outer epidermal shell. It will not communicate. Some will retain remnants of internal organs, such as eyes or lungs. However, these are vestigial, no longer serving any purpose. The brain functions deviate from any normal human patterns. Having completed the process, this thing will attempt to burrow down into the soil via any means at its disposal. An outer shell digging into the soil. The tunnels underneath Darrington. The genetic material uncovered below. Dermis tissue with two types of DNA a mix of human and cicada. There is something out there. It is preying on people's faith, their longing for prosperity. 
than when these communities are presented with someone who can take advantage of that faith, like Pastor Jenner or Kai Sanchez. They find themselves encouraged to push their faith to its furthest limit, and then they are rewarded by becoming something else, something nightmarish. The question is, when they wake up and crawl back out from their tunnels, leaving a sinkhole in their wake, where do these cicada creatures go? Want to own an SCP of your own? Go to scpswag.com for premium anomalous merchandise. Now go and check out SCP-3004 Insect God Imago and SCP-2852 Sadistic Madman Party Crasher Cousin Johnny to uncover more information about a pair of anomalies with a surprising connection to that old-time religion.